Hello everyone, back again with you. Uh, we are ready to get started with series 147. 147 is our next series at the plate and ready to start. We just finished 146. That was an unbelievable series between the Cubs and the Indians. I would encourage you to go back and watch that one. And it's uh, best of seven that came down to the end with some great games. And we look for more of the same as we got two more teams from the history of baseball going up against each other uh, on Out of the Park Baseball 20. And two teams that I think you're going to enjoy, two decent teams. And let's go and take a look at those specific teams as we introduce them. And it's 1964, and the White Sox, you may have forgotten, were very good in 64. They actually won 98 games, finished second in the American League. Al Lopez at the helm and a team that wins 98 games and gets no postseason play. That's rare in baseball history, but that was the case here with the White Sox. Um, but... They get a chance here again with us to uh, show what they can do. It'll be interesting to see here as we look at the Sox a little closely. Bill Scowern, uh, you can see there in his 33-year-old season after his days with the Yankees, he um, only played in 73 games, but he's a bat maybe to watch. We might see some of him as we go on. But Ron Hansen, 20 home runs, 68, AR, 68 RBIs, 261. He was the shortstop. Pete Ward, 23 home runs, 94 RBIs, 282, a very good year for the 26-year-old war. Jim Landis with the 208 average. Floyd Robinson, you can see here, he actually hit 301. He had a good year, 11 home runs, 59 RBIs for him. Dave Nicholson, 13 home runs. He only hit 204, so uh, some of the average is quite low for a 98-win team. J.C. Martin. The catcher at 197, so the team average not good, and quite frankly, no real marquee names in this lineup, uh, but it's an era of pitching, keep in mind, so high-scoring games were not the norm, and 300 hitters were definitely not the norm. Uh, you can see here Al Wise had 22 steals, but the Sox won't beat you with the high-scoring variety or really with the long ball. They got it done with their pitching, and looking at that, much closer, you'll see just why this team was so good. Gary Peters, 20 and 8 with a 250 ERA, three shutouts on the year, an outstanding year. He struck out 205 men. Great year for Peters for the Sox. Juan Pizarro, 19 and 9, 256, almost just as good. He actually got four shutouts. What a year for Pizarro, uh, getting it done. Uh, Joe Horland, 13 and 9, his ERA a minuscule, 1.88 over 200 innings. Uh, John Buzzhart, part of the mix as well. Uh, you see Hoyt Wilhelm at 41 years old. He also was a big contributor, 12-9 and nine with 27 saves, way ahead of his time. Wilhelm just closing out games. You can see here just where the strength of the Sox team was. Outstanding pitching, getting the job done, and supporting an offense that maybe wouldn't light up the scoreboard. So the Sox, a tough team to... Uh, crack, I would say, and a team that came up a little short in 64, but we'll see what they can do in our Series 147, and they're going to match up against the team from another era, definitely, it is the 1910 Philadelphia Phillies, and looking more closely at the Phillies, they also had a winning record, 78 and 75, with Red doing their manager, they finished fourth in the National League different era, but also an era that kind of similar to the 60s. Not a lot of runs scored, obviously, during these thin years. The game was played a, bit, a little bit differently, kind of similar to the 60s, where uh, the reliance was on pitching and not on the big bats or the long ball. Looking closely here, you can see uh, Johnny Bates, a 305 hitter. He had 11 triples, 61 RBIs, but Sherry McGee, the real star here, 331. 123 RBI, six home runs for McGee. Uh, quite a season for him. Uh, someone we need to really keep an eye on uh, as we go forward. Mickey Donlin, maybe you heard of, 263 average. He had 31 doubles, a decent year for Donlin. Johnny Bates, 305. John Titus, also part of the outfield, a little bit older at 34 years old. Otto Nabby, 261. He was the second baseman. Uh, he had 44 RBIs and 18 doubles. Kitty Barnesfield, the first baseman at 239. He also had over 100 hits and 52 RBIs. 
a lot of speed. Not to mention McGee also stole 49 bases. Um, reminiscent of the era. Further down, looking at the pitching, 22-game winner Earl Moore in his 35 starts. He had six shutouts, 283 innings, walked 121 men, a high number there, but had 185 strikeouts. Bob Ewing at 37 years old, 16 and 14, a 3 ERA. Lou Moran, 13 and 14, 355. And George McQuillan at 25 years old in his 17 starts was excellent with a 1.60. Eddie Stack there as well. So some good pitching here for the Phillies. Also a superstar definitely on the roster in McGee and some support as well. But again, the record played out almost even for the Phillies. 78 and 75. So as we head into the game engine, definitely the Phillies being the underdog. And it is the White Sox with their 98 wins that are the favorites. The game will open up with two at Comiskey Park before we head out to the Baker Bowl for the middle portion of the series. Two teams from different eras, but should be interesting. Two winning teams. And a series I think that will have intrigue anytime we match teams from over 50 years apart. In this case, 54 years. And looking at game one, it's going to be Earl Moore against Joe Horland. A wonderful setup here for this best of seven. Once again, it's the 1910 Philadelphia Phillies, the underdogs, taking on the 1964 Chicago White Sox. Coming at you here as we get ready to roll. We head out to Comiskey Park for game one of this best of seven. Series 147. So we head out to Comiskey Park, game one. We're in the top of the second inning. Joe Horland up there against Kitty Barnesfield. We got runners second and third with only one out. And here's a fly ball to center field. That ball's going to be caught. Let's see if the runner tags. He will. The ball's going to be cut out. And on the board first are the visitors. It is the Phillies who take the lead. We'll move now bottom and second with two outs. Moore delivers. This ball's hit deep to left field, all the way up and over the fence. Nicholson with the tater, and the White Sox take the lead here in game one, two to one, after the two run homer by Dave Nicholson. Two outs now. It's Sherry McGee up here with Nave on first. McGee is going to go deep here. This ball is way back there, and. McGee gets it done with the man on to flip the game and put the Phillies back on top. McGee, so much talk about him before the series began, and he's proven himself here right away. Three to two Phillies. We'll move now bottom of the third, two outs. Pete Ward at the plate. Ward is going to fist this one into right field. It drops right around in third, and Ward's going to tie this game. So back and forth we go here in game one. 3-3 three, three tie. Hanson, the hitter, with two on and two outs. Hanson takes ball four, so these bases will be loaded here. Bottom of the third inning, tie game. Don Buford, the hitter. Buford hits it two second. Play will be made there, so our game remains tied here at three. As we move on to the sixth inning, Orland facing Otto Nab. There's a ball inside, so a leadoff walk for the visiting Phillies. Tie game at three. Sherry McGee back up there. He's already homered. And McGee lifts it to left field, but this will be playable. Play is made there for the first out. Ron Hanson, the hitter with one on. This ball's lifted to left. That ball's got some carry, but... It's going to be caught for an out. Bottom of the sixth inning here. Eddie Stack facing Buford. This ball's drilled to left field for a base hit. So the Sox here in the bottom of the sixth trying to start a rally. They got first and second for Nicholson, who's already homered. He takes a borderline pitch outside. That's a close call, and the bases are now loaded with only one out. And Jerry McNurtney. Up the plate. McNurtney now lifts it to 
Center field, this might score the go-ahead run. Let's take a look. Runner tags, throw to the plate. Cross in the plate, in time. His word, and it is now 4-3 to three in favor of the home team. We move now to the top of the seventh. John Titus is at the plate. He's facing Eddie Fisher. The Sox with the lead, and this ball's drilled to right center field to the wall. Looking up, we're tied again. Titus with a solo home run. 405 feet, 4-4 four four is our score. Runner on first now for Jimmy Walsh. Walsh drills one deep to left. This one's at the near the wall, but caught. Nicholson with the play. Thought that ball was going to carry a little bit further. Here's Hanson now, bottom of the eighth, one out. There's ball four. He checked the swing on that one. So we're on for four to four game. Game one of this the seven series. This ball's hit to second. That's going to be a force at second. Buford will be safe at first. So with two outs, Nicholson the batter. Blotters now come in to pitch. This ball hit to second. Play will be made. So we'll move now to the late, late innings. Top of the ninth we go. Game tied at four. Titus the hitter. That falls inside, so we got a leadoff walk here. Let's see what Bransfield puts down a bunt. He will. Small ball, ball here as the play's made at first. The go ahead run at second here for the Phillies. One out. And Red Dewan is the man at the plate. Owen lines this one to second base. A nice play is made there by Buford. So two outs. Runner on third. Frank Ladaris is the hitter. Ladaris hits it to second. Play will be made there. So the Sox get out of the ninth inning and the threat is put aside. We're still tied at four in this ball game. Bottom of the ninth. Al Weiss the hitter. Weiss will hit this one up the middle of base hit. Here comes Jim Landis. Let's see if he tries to move the runner. No, he swings and winds it over the second baseman's head. We got first and second. Nobody out. Tommy McCraw, the hitter. Lou Shetler is the man now who's pitching. And this one is put down. Infield hit. He beats it out. Base is loaded for the White Sox. A huge spot here for Floyd Robinson. Infield in. And there it is, ball four. He can't get the pitch over the plate, and the White Sox win this one on a walk in the bottom of the ninth inning, five to four the final score. Comiskey Park celebrating, and the Sox will take the lead in the series. Pete Ward was three for four. Joe Horland went six inning for the winning Sox, and John Titus one for one with a home run and a couple walks. But it was that ninth inning where Hoyt Wilhelm actually gets the win, and Shetler walked in the winning run. There was nobody out, and he could not deal with the pressure. Chicago takes game one and gets off to the right foot in the series. Quite a game for game one. Came down to that late inning dr dramatics. And now for game two, it is going to be George McQuillan against Gary Peters as the Sox try to take two in a row. See if they can stymie the Phillies again as Philly's going Philly's to try to get back on their feet. Game two coming up from Comiskey Park. Let's see what transpires in this best of seven between two teams that are putting it all on the line to win. Game two now, one out. Sherry McGee at the plate. We're in the top of the first. And McGee's going to roll this one into the outfield. Run around the third. Throw to the plate's going to be late. And McGee with an RBI 
here in the very first inning, making it one nothing Philadelphia. Got him on the first runner on second. There's a ground ball through the hole. Pete Ward comes through, and the throw to the plate also going to be late. One to one our score, and we move all the way to seventh inning, still tied at one. Johnny Bates is the hitter as Gary Peters delivers. This ball is going to be dumped in the left field for a base hit. Barnes Bensfield is the hitter, and this ball is hit to the shortstop. Turning for a double play are the White Sox, so they get the twin killing when they need it. And Otto Nab, the hitter. This ball is outside. Runner moving, a steal on the plate. Trying to steal second, and with two outs, Rabe with a chance. He takes ball four, so we got runners on first and second. Two outs. For Red doing. Boy, he'll hit this one up the middle. That's going to be a tough play. But a nice play by the shortstop. We hit the seventh in the stretch. We are tied here in game number two. One to one to score. Don Buford is the hitter. And Buford goes to center field. That ball's going to drop for a hit. So the Sox here have a man on for Nicholson. Nobody out. Full count. This goes to the shortstop. Tough play. He'll make it. Runner advances to second. McNerney now the hitter. McNerney lifts it to left. This should be caught. It is. Al Weiss the hitter now. Weiss grooves this one to center field. Catches me. So the 1-1 one -one game remains here as we move in the late innings. Bottom of the eighth inning, Tommy McCaw, the hitter. Slaughter, the pitcher. Drilled into right field for a single. Robinson, the hitter. Play is made there at first for the out. Runner moves now. Our base is empty now for Bill Scoward. Water the hitter. There's a base hit to center field, so Scoward comes through with two outs. Game still tied at one. Pete Ward the hitter. Ward strikes out to end the inning. We move to the ninth, all tied at one. And the game now, believe it or not, moves all the way down to the 13th inning. We're still tied at one. Fred Linderos is the hitter. The delivery, Fred Talbot is the pitcher, and this ball is lifted into right field, but should be playable. The pitching and the defense has just been unbelievable here in game two. Eddie Grant is the hitter. One out. Grant will line a single to center field for the Phillies, so that is the seventh hit for Philadelphia. Mickey Doolin, the hitter, and he'll go up the middle. That's a base hit. Runner moving the third, so Doolin comes through. One out. Phil's now threatening big time. They got runners on the corner. And their star, Sherry McGee, at the plate. McGee, however, pops it up. That'll be playable. Play is made there. Nobody can score on the pop up. And Johnny Bates at the plate. Ground is to second, and the White Sox get out of the inning without a run allowed. We'll move to the bottom of the 13th. Smoke Burgess is the hitter against Jim Maroney. Bottom of the 13th inning, one to one ball game. This ball's hit to right field, got some carry all the way to the wall, but caught down there. Ball had some carry, but not enough. Floyd Robinson now the hitter. This ball's hit back to the mound. Play is made there. Second out of the inning. A marathon going on here at Comiskey Park. Kitty Barnesfield is the hitter. We are in the top of the 14th inning. 1-1 one -one ball game. Barnesfield is going to line this one to center field, but right there's 
McCraw to make the play. Otto Nave is the hitter. Two outs, top of the 14th. Nave will take ball four on a 3-2 pitch. Ray Herbert now facing red, doing. Runner on second. This ball's lined the right field, and that's going to drop in there. Runner around in third. Throw to the plate, not in time, and Philadelphia will take the lead here, 2-1 to one in the 14th inning. We move to the bottom of the 14th now. It is 2-1. to one. Eddie Stack, the, the man to try to close it down. Bill Scott, the hitter. This ball is lifted to left field. Should be playable. That's out number one. One out for Pete Ward. Ward takes it inside for ball four. Ron Hansen now the hitter. This is hit to short and the turn of first double play. That will do it. 14 inning marathon is going the way of Philadelphia. They pull it off and win this one two to one. To tie the series at one, what a marathon, what a well-played game, game number two was. George McQuillan, way back when, had seven strong innings of work. Gary Peters as well. Mike, Dun Mike Doolin, three for five with two, R two doubles and a run. Maroney, the winner. Herbert, the loser. Stack gets the save. And you can see here from the box score, very, very even. A high number of pitchers pitching their hearts out in this one. And in the end, it was the visitors who get the win. Two to one, our final. Looking at the way they won it in those final innings, it actually was a single by Ron Dewan that got the job done in just a game that was so well played. And now we head out to the Baker Bowl for game number three. It's now a best of five as both these teams playing well and facing off against each other. Let's see what happens next. We got Juan Pizarro against Bob Ewing as the series continues. Game number three from the Baker Bowl. After a 14-inning marathon, the action continues just ahead for game three of this best of seven. Baker Bowl now, top of the first inning. And we have at the plate Floyd Robinson against Bob Ewing. And there's a ground ball in the short. That's going to be two, a double play turn by the Phillies here in the very first inning. Bottom now of the first, Johnny Bates, the hitter. Gets a hold of one. That's going to be a fair ball in left field. Runner head in the third. He's going to try to score. And the Phillies will take a 1-0 lead here in the very first inning. We'll move bottom of the second. Odie Nabe up at the plate. Pizarro delivers. This ball is drilled deep to left. Looking up and it is over the wall. Home run. Nabe gets it done, and this game now is 2 to nothing. Phillies as they break out in front. Top of the third, Robinson the hitter. Man on, and he lifts it to right field. That ball is going to be caught. No, it is not caught. He can't hang on. Pizarro heads over the third. Titus makes an error out there in right field. It looked like he had a beat on it. He lost it, and now Scourn has a chance. <clears throat> against Ewing. Scalwarn will pop this one up. That should be playable. It is, so the error does not cost the home team, and it remains 2 to nothing. Philadelphia. We'll move to the fourth. Ron Hansen at the plate. Man on. Hansen takes ball four, so Chicago trying to rally here in the fourth inning. Here's Buford. Buford swings through it, a strikeout. He's down on strikes, and here's Nicholson with a one out, two on, three one pitch. He takes ball four. 
<coughs> so the base is loaded with only one out. Bob Ewing having issues here. McNertney, the hitter. And McNertney's going to lift this one to center field. Is it deep enough to score a run? Runner's going to tag the throw to the plate that looks like they got him. They do. He's out. Beautiful throw from center field, and the score remains 2 to nothing. That's Philadelphia is getting it done here in game number three. Here's Scourn against Ewing. And this ball is drilled to center field for a base hit. So Chicago continues to try to rally here. Here's Pete Ward. Ward hits a fly ball. That should be playable to center field. It is. Buford, the hitter, man on third. This ball's drilled to right. That's going to get the White Sox on the board. RBI single here by Buford in the sixth inning. It is two to one. McNertney now up at the plate in the seventh inning. Ewing still in the game. This ball is hit to center field and deep. Looking up to the wall. It is over the head of the center fielder. <coughs> Mishandled by Bates out there. And McNertney is on second base. They're actually going to give Bates an error. And Pizarro now at the plate. The pitcher puts down the bunt. Runner moving the third. So with only one out. We have the tying run at third base and McCraw. A chance to tie this game or better. He looks at strike three, however. A big strikeout by Ewing. Then a big spot. So two outs and it comes down to Floyd Robinson here in the seventh inning. And Robinson lines a shot to the right to the left fielder. McGee had him played perfectly and we move to the stretch. It is two to one Philadelphia in a very tight game. Slaughter's come on the pitch. Scoward, the hitter here in the eighth inning. And there's a walk. So Scoward gets on base to lead off the eighth inning. One run game. Ward at the plate. Ward lines a shot to the left field. That's a base hit. So Chicago, two men on for Hanson. Nobody out. There's a strikeout. Slaughter gets him looking on the inside portion of the plate. So one out here, Don Buford looking to come through. He strikes out. So Slaughter turning it on here. Actually, that was Brennan as the bullpen is at work here for the Phillies, and now we got Bill Culp in the game against Steve Nicholson. Two outs, eighth inning, two to one our score, and there's a walk. So the bases are going to be loaded here for Chicago with two outs. The turning point of this game, McNertney at the plate against Culp. And here's a ground ball, too short. Play is made, and the Phillies get out of the eighth inning, and the White Sox cannot convert on a bases loaded situation great defense all game long here by philadelphia and the game now moves bottom of the eighth luterus is the hitter he lines a single to left field but we'll move top of the ninth now it's a two to one game burt humphreys is the man to try to close it down al weiss the hitter Series tied at one. Philly trying to pull the upset here. Here's a ground ball to second. Play is going to be made. So that's the first out of the inning. Craw the hitter. Two to one to score. This ball is lifted into right field for a single. The defense playing deep on that one. And Robinson now trying to get that run across if he can. Grounder to second, however, out at second. Relay to first double play. The Phillies are going to take game number two. A tight one it was, 2-1 to one the final. They also take a 2-1 game lead in this series. Phillies mean business in this one. They jump ahead as they win a great defensive and pitching matchup in game two. 
Pizarro for the White Sox takes the loss. Ewing, the win, who was excellent in his seven innings of work. Ron Hansen, two for three with a double and a run. And Humphreys closed the door in the ninth inning to preserve the win for the home team and send celebrations in the Baker Bowl as the Phillies are surprising the White Sox. Now they've won two in a row, and it sets up for an intriguing game number four as the Sox try to even things out and the Phillies continue to try to pull away. It's going to be John Buzzhart against Lou Morin in game number four. Coming at you from the Baker Bowl, the action continues. Two outs, Johnny Bates at the plate, runner on second. Here's a line drive center field. That ball's got the carry to drop. So the Phillies again take the lead <clears throat> early here on a double. McGee scores one to nothing. Philadelphia to the fourth inning. Pete Ward up against Lou Morin. And there's a single <clears throat> that gets through there in the outfield. So Chicago trying to get on the board. Ron Hansen with one out and two on. He'll line a single. That ball is going to drop. Runner's going to hold up. And the base is loaded for the White Sox. Only one out. John Buford's the hitter. And Buford will slice this ball through the middle. One run in. We got a tie game. Buford comes through with one out and an RBI. <clears throat> Nicholson now with a big chance. One out. Ball four and a run's going to score. So this is now Chicago's lead. Two to one after this big fourth inning. Not over yet. Harry McNerdy at the plate. Only one out. And this one sliced. And we might have two. It is a double play. A very nice play there by the Phillies infield. But it is two to one in favor of Chicago. We move bottom of the fourth. John Titus at the plate with one out. He looks at ball four. So two men on. Only one out. John Buzzhart, the pitcher against Kitty Bransfield. Bransfield lifts this one up to left. Should be playable. It is. <clears throat> Red Doohan, the hitter. Doohan, the center field. That ball's dropping quickly, but a nice play out there in center field by McCraw. He saves the lead and saves the run. Two to one. Remaining our score here as we move to the fifth inning. What a play by McCraw there in center field. So two on for Scourn. We're in the top of the fifth inning. And Scowern is going to hit it to second. A great play there. And a double play it is to end the inning. We'll move now to the sixth. McNerdy up there with men on the corners. Lou Moran facing another jam. This one's lifted and lofted to right field. Play is going to be made there, so the lead remains at 2-1 to one as we move to the 7th. Floyd Robinson now with the man on second and one out. Another tight ball game. We've seen them all pretty tight in this series. And there's a single over the head of the first baseman. Throw the home is going to be late. And it is now 3-1 to one Chicago. Make it 4-1. to one. We'll move bottom of the 7th. And feel that the plate. Bransfield will lift this one to left field. Should be playable, and it is. First out of the inning here. But we'll move to the bottom of the eighth. It's a 4-2 to two game. Don Mossy has come on. Nobody out. Leadoff man draws a walk, so really trying to rally here. Sherry McGee against Mossy with nobody out. This ball's ripped to short, but a beautiful play there. They get the play made at second. No relay off the first. So here's Bates with one out, representing the tying run, and he'll hit it up the middle. Another nice play. Another force at second. Hanson, the shortstop, has been busy. Here's Mickey Doolin with two outs. He'll take ball four, so two on, two out. Bottom of the eighth inning, Mossy's facing John Titus. 
Kenny strikes him out. Mossy with a big strikeout. Four to two, the White Sox remain in control. One out top of the ninth inning. And Bremen is the pitcher, and this ball's hit hard to left field. It's going to get down. McCraw is going to have a double. He fails the score, however, and bottom of the ninth inning. Here comes Hoyt Wilhelm to try to close the door. Key Brandsfield at the plate. Full count. Here it comes. Strikeout on an off-speed pitch. Wilhelm with a beauty. Red Bowen the hitter now. One out. Again, a full count. This one's lifted into right into the gap. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Making it a double. Doing thought about three, but he's going to hold up here as Luteris is representing the tying run with one out. But this one's hit into the hole. It gets through. So here come the Phillies runners on the corners. Only one out. When he runs on first, Eddie Grant's the hitter. And Grant hits it to short. Play made at second. No play at first. The run will score. Four to three, our game. Grant representing the tying run. Nobby representing the winning run. Two outs. Here's the pitch by Wilhelm. This ball's hit. Two third. The play is made, and the White Sox hold on for the win here in game number four to even the series at two. Another tight one. They win this one four to three. Hey, Wilhelm holds on here in the ninth inning for the save. Buzzhart is going to get the win for the White Sox. He went seven innings, striking out five. Floyd Robinson, three for four for the visitors with an RBI and two runs scored. And Dave Nicholson, two for three, also with an RBI. The two-run seventh, a big inning for the White Sox, as well as the two-run fourth. They never trailed in this one, and they did what they had to do to win game number four and tie this series at two. Another doozy, we got George Chalmers of the Phillies with a elbow strain. He'll be out for the rest of the series. But we are tied two games apiece as we head into game number five. You can see some of the numbers here. Pete Ward is 9 for 17 at the plate, hitting at 529. Quite a series for him. Sherry McGee at 353 with three RBIs as well. It's been a tight, low-scoring series, and we expect more of the same actually every game other than the one we just played was a one-run game. Tight, low-scoring, great pitching and defense, and the series all even after four as we move now to game number five, the final game at the Baker Bowl. Someone's going to head back to Chicago with a series lead. It's going to be Joe Horton against Oral Moore back at it with another matchup. That is intriguing, and this series can go either way, folks. Stay tuned as we move out to the Baker Bowl and game number five to see who will get the edge in this best of seven. Top first, bases loaded already for the White Sox. Two outs, a big spot. Man of the moment. Here's the pitch. This ball's drilled to center field, but great play by the second baseman to end the inning and leave three stranded. That will end the threat. We'll move to the second. Navy made a great play there, but now the Sox are threatening again. Floyd Robinson up there with the base or two men on, and he hits at the center field. This one way back there near the wall, looking up. It is gone. Home run, deep center field. Goodbye baseball, Floyd Robinson, a three-run homer. The Sox break through here in the second inning. Four to nothing, our score will move to the fifth. Vic Nertney, the hitter. And he stack is the new pitcher. And this ball is drilled deep to left. Deep into the night. Looking up. It's gone. Home run for McNurtney. Five to nothing now. Seven to nothing. We move all the way to the end of this ball game. Bruce Howard, the man on the mound. Mickey Doolin up there. With a man on first, it has been all White Sox today. This ball's hit to short. They get one, the relay, two. 
make this game's history in quick fashion, a three-hitter for the White Sox. They take care of Philadelphia easily today, 7 to nothing. our final score. Boyd Robinson, what a game for Robinson, 5 for 5. A home run, a double, three RBIs, two runs scored. Joe Horland, outstanding for Chicago as well. Pitched eight strong, allowing no runs, striking out two, allowing only three hits. And Jerry McNerdy, two for four with a home run, two runs scored. An outstanding game for Robinson. Five for five performance. He made it look easy. And the White Sox do exactly what they want to do before heading home here for the latter part of the series now. They have a 3-2 game lead, and they now get to play at home with the Phillies and their backs against the wall as their bats have been silenced. And now a perfect opportunity for Chicago to end this series in six games. They're going to send Gary Peters to the mound, who was very good in his last outing, up against George McQuillan who's going to try to keep the visiting Phillies in this series and force a Game 7. All coming at you now after a great game number, a shutout performance, Game number 5 by Chicago. Let's see what we have in store back at Comiskey Park for Game 6 of this best of 7. Back to Comiskey Park we go. Out of, of the first inning. Pete Ward is the hitter with the bases loaded for the Sox. Nobody out. And this ball's drilled deep to right field all the way to the wall. Wouldn't you believe it? A no two pitch and a grand slam home run for Ward in the very first inning and the Sox get off to the perfect start they are on their way you would feel now winning this ball game after that big blow here's McQuillan now it's a 4-1 game the Phillies trying to come back and they line this one into the hole that's a base hit runners gonna round third so the Phillies bounce back here with two runs in the second inning McQuillan with a base hit and a pitcher comes through, and we move to the third. Sherry McGee at the plate. A man on. This ball's hit deep to left field. Could it be? It might be. It is gone. Home run, McGee. And just like that, when the Sox thought they had it under control, the Phillies score two again here in the third. It's a 4-4 game. And Ron Hansen at the plate. We're in the bottom of the third. Here's a walk. So the Sox have to try to get on top again. Don Buford, the hitter. He lines one into the gap. That's going to get to the wall, and the Sox do exactly that. Buford gets a one-run double. Five to four Chicago. They bounce right back on top of this ball game. And now we move to the bottom of the fourth. Two outs. Skowern is the hitter. Six to four our game has increased. And Skowern goes deep to left. That's way back there. Goodbye, home run, Bill Skowern. It is a two-run shot, and the White Sox have re-established their four-run lead, eight to four. He was in the long ball to do it. Here's Pete Ward. Eight for our score here in game six. And Ward is going to go deep. Could it be back-to-back? -back? It is. Opposite field for Pete Ward. 9 to 4 Chicago as Comiskey Park is celebrating already. 9 to 6, we move to the eighth inning. Bruce Howard up there with two outs. The Phillies again trying to make a comeback. Here's the 1 2 pitch. That's hit past the third baseman. So the Phillies cut the lead to three, actually. It's 9 6, and they have had a chance, I should say, cannot come through. We'll move to the top of the ninth now. Nine to six, our score. Hoyt Wilhelm with two outs, looking to end this series against Mickey Doolin. Nobody on, hands on their feet. Here's the pitch, strike three. Celebrations for the Sox. They have done it. 
they win this series taking care of business in six games and finishing on a flurry to end this series and win it on their home field winning that the last game here nine to six with three home runs being hit one by scowern and two by ward ward actually two for three hit two home runs in the game with five rbis came to play in this deciding game bill scowern as well three for four with a big two run home run sherry mcgee played well for the phillies but they just ran out of gas fans in this series could not get it done peters the win mcquillan the loss wilhelm is second save of the series and this one is history the Sox won game one philly came back winning two and three and chicago won three in a row after that winning two games at the baker bowl and taking care of game number six pete ward is our mvp and rightfully so what a series for the third baseman he really performed well for the Sox. the canadian was 11 for 23 he hit two homers eight rbis walked four times had a 556 on base 1.295 ops what a series scored six runs one of the better series we've seen anybody play he also hit two home runs in that final clinching ball game sherry mcgee 10 for 25 he drove in five with two home runs as expected he was the leader of the offense but the pitching had some rough spots. You can see here McQuillan struggling as well as Moore. And the bullpen did try to do the job. Uh, Barney Slaughter especially played well, pitched well. Uh, but some of the starters got knocked around at the wrong time. Looking at the Sox, you can see here Floyd Robinson, five RBIs, including a home run. And Scott were in there coming on late uh, with a 292 average. Uh, Don Buford also had a good series. Looking at the pitching, the bullpen, very, very good. Hoyt Wilhelm had two saves. He was at a 180. Joe Horland, 193 in his two starts and 14 innings of work. Gary Peters uh, got roughed up a little bit more. And further down the line, Ray Herbert with a loss. But it did not matter. The Sox get the job done in Series 147 winning as the favorites in six games over the Phillies. It looked like the Phillies were going to turn things around after winning game number three, two to one. But it was the White Sox who produce the momentum at the end of the series to take it and win it in six games. So that'll do it. Hope you enjoyed it. Series 147 is in the books. Uh, the Park Baseball 20 presenting historical baseball matchups for you. This one's history one final time. It is the 64 White Sox over the 1910 Phillies, four games to two. We'll catch you later.